Hello beautiful people and welcome back to a new video. My name is Evelyn Barta and those of you that are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to have you all here. On this channel I am discussing things that are related to our ascension, to humanity's ascension. I am receiving also channeled messages from extraterrestrials that are assisting us in this process and my aim is really to raise awareness about what is going on behind the scenes, behind the official narrative, behind closed doors. So those of you that have been already here, welcome back and today I am back with a new channeled message from the Pleiadians and I received this message two days ago but I didn't have time to record this video so Today I'm recording it and they were talking about something related to timelines which made me do a bit of a research about where we are heading, what timeline we are on. And I discussed this also already in previous videos where I received information about the timelines and I'm always trying to find out really what is the current timeline that we are on. I also discussed in previous videos that the central governance is doing their best to manipulate these timelines and to get us to a timeline which doesn't have a positive outcome. So in today's video this is something that I want to talk about and I want to talk about this interesting project that was used by the American military starting from the 1960s and 1970s and I didn't hear before about this project. And that project was actually used for checking probable outcomes, future outcomes of humanity. So it was almost like a time machine. And I came across some information from an individual called Bill Wood, who was an ex-Navy SEAL, and that came forward with information about what is actually going on behind the scenes. So I will be talking about that today. And uh, before that, I just wanted to say that uh, I am definitely feeling the effects of this lunar eclipse that is approaching on the 19th of November. I have to say that the energies are not very uplifting. I did have this feeling of grief, of loss, and I realized that that was actually last weekend. I realized that I tuned into the collective energy. I was having all of a sudden these thoughts of loss, the, the death and uh, the ending of something and this feeling of grief. So very, very dark energies. And I realized that those were not my energies. And then I was checking with my tarot cards as well because I was like, let's see what is going on, how the collective is feeling. And I actually pulled the death card. So this is the collective energy. And uh, it's not a surprise that it's so dark because November is, I would say that for me, is the darkest month. Always at this period of time, there are so many changes happening in my life as well. And it's a real death and rebirth because it's Scorpio season. Pluto is playing a very big part in this feeling of loss, in this feeling of death and rebirth. November is always like that. It's, it's very dark. We have Halloween. We have things that are happening. So the energies are very, very concentrated. Plus we have this eclipse with a very dark star, which is called Algol. I talk about that in my video about the eclipses. I will link it there if you want to watch it and you haven't done it yet. And uh, of course, Algol is associated in the Greek mythology with Gorgona Medusa. So it couldn't get darker than this. But the good news is that I think December is going to be more uplifting. At least this is how it's happening always for me every single year. And uh, what happened in the Astro World Festival as well? I mean, I just heard about it not long time ago and I did my research. There was some really dark energy concentrated there. Plus, as I said, Halloween as well. Plus, there are things in the mainstream media about refugees coming from the Middle East and this, so to speak, terrorist attack in the UK as well, which I saw yesterday because I'm not watching the news, but things are coming up on YouTube. <laughs> and I saw that, uh, you know, there was an explosion and I mean, it's the same narrative over and over again and people are still falling for it. We are still falling into believing that there's a group of people that is threatening our existence and there's always a threat that we need to, to watch out. There's always some terrorist attack or a virus or something, you know, that is, is threatening our existence as a human race, as a group of people, as a society. So I think we are moving beyond that. But this period of time is showing us what is that we still have to work on? What is that we still have to deal with? and to close and to, to tie loose ends. So humanity is at crossroads for good and we can choose what we want. Do we still want the old BS and to keep believing what we are being presented on a plate or we want something new? We want to dig deeper and we want to find out the truth because what is being presented on a plate 
is just the very tip of the iceberg and has very little to do with what is going on. So we will speak about that today. Another aspect that I didn't know about, but I want to raise awareness about. So let's talk about this project looking glass that this person that used to work for the US military is describing because he was part of that project and worked for the US government and military in the 90s before 9-11. So there's a long interview with Bill Wood. If you want to watch that, I can link it in the description box below. But long story short, he was basically forced and blackmailed by the US military that if he doesn't work for them and doesn't participate in the bombing of certain targets, buildings, villages, cities in Iraq, and that was before 9-11, that he will end up in jail. If you want to know why, you can watch that video. But the idea is that he was participating in that and what he went through was a very, very tormenting process and a very psychologically damaging process as well, together with others as well in the US Navy. And they were forced to target certain buildings and to kill many civilians in Iraq because they were blackmailed by the, the military. So they didn't have any other choice. They had to follow orders, even though they knew that something is wrong, is not right, what they were doing. They knew that that psychological torture was done with a purpose as well. And they were working with these Tomahawk missiles. So they were responsible for, for the killing of many, many people in Iraq. But those bombings were done with the purpose of provoking people in Iraq, provoking the government and uh, provoking the Middle East, basically. So these were events and red flags initiated by the US government in order to have a reason to start the war on terror afterwards. And that was before 9-11. He also talks about 9-11 in that interview and what he thinks that it was. So we know what happened afterwards. We know the story about the US and the Middle East and having a reason to attack them. But what he is talking about also is this project looking glass that he was involved in which was a technology created by the u.s military and it was i would say an extraterrestrial technology that uh, had the purpose of seeing probable outcome probable timelines uh, he is also calling it yellow cube and then by the way david wilcock is talking about this project looking glass as well and he's calling it orion cube and he's describing it almost like a huge third eye that has a seat inside of it. It's like a machine that is very similar to the machine that they built in the movie Contact. If you haven't watched that movie, you have to watch it. That's one of my favorite movies with uh, Judy Foster. It's an amazing movie. I remember when I saw it like many years ago, I was fascinated by it. So you need to watch that movie. So there's this yellow cube or Orion cube. And those that are sitting inside of it, they have to vibrate on a certain level of frequency. They have to have a certain level of consciousness in order to see probable outcomes. So what Bill Wood is saying, actually, is that at a certain point in time, that technology was showing only one outcome over and over again, no matter what the actions were the present actions regardless of the events unfolding in our society the outcome was the same over and over again and that particular point in time was the 21st of december 2012. so the possibility of different outcomes and timelines was changing before the 21st of december 2012. but starting from that point this project looking glass was showing only one particular outcome. He's literally saying that there is a bottleneck that is showing an inevitable contraction of the timelines. So they cannot go beyond at a certain point because the outcome will be over and over again the same, the same timeline. And this is confirming why I always receive in my messages in, in my channel is that the outcome is assured. No matter how things are unfolding right now, the highest outcome is assured. So what he's saying that there is this inevitable event of ascension of spiritual awakening of humanity and what they have been trying desperately to do up to this point is to fix that bottleneck to fix that timeline the problem to prevent this positive outcome from happening and he was actually asked by the u.s military to fix the problem and he said that no matter how many times they were simulating and trying and checking the timelines the outcome was the same over and over again and at that point, 
the negative forces knew that they lost the game, that there's nothing that they can do. They can prolong the game, but they cannot change it any longer. He said that this is almost like a chess game where the negatives know that there's a checkmate for them, but they also know that there are only a few moves left on the table and they are trying their best to keep the game going. However, they are very well aware that they don't have control over this ascension, this evolution of consciousness, that it will happen anyways, but they still cling into the idea that they can change it. So they do their best to, to make this game to last as long as possible. They are manipulating timelines. The only thing that they have control over is the reaction of people. Problem, reaction, solution. So they come up with all sorts of things that are putting the sense of safety of people in danger, that there's a threat around the corner all the time, and uh, they keep you on low vibrations, which we know. But no matter what they are trying to do, and no matter how hard they are trying to control the reaction of people, that will have the exact opposite effect of what they are trying to obtain and what they are expecting with those events. And uh, their time is up. Checkmate. It's just a matter of time before this game is ending. And those that are watching this game and are outside, which is society and people, are not aware with the fact that the negatives are losing. Only the two players are aware with that. There are still a few moves left on the table, but if we start to be aware with the fact that the negatives are losing and we know the end result, then we can speed up the whole process of this ascension. And I think more and more of us are aware with that fact that... There's no other timeline, there's no other possibility, even though they keep talking about timeline 2, which is the opposite of the timeline of ascension, and where humanity is destroying itself, and uh, the planet is destroyed to a degree that there's no living and there's no possibility of living on the surface of the planet. So we do have to live below the surface, underground, in other words. And actually now connecting the dots after knowing all that information, I think the climate change and this fear-mongering tactic about the climate change and where humanity is heading is just done with the purpose of initiating that negative timeline. So it's important for us not to buy into believing that something disastrous is going to happen with humanity. That is not an option. There's only one option, and that is ascension. So whatever is being injected into the equation, the end result will be the same. And 2012 was a zero time reference for that. The 21st of December 2012 wasn't the end of the world. It was the end of their world. It was the end of the negative forces. This is what Bill Wood is saying. And uh, I think what they are trying to do with this fear-mongering and uh, all these events, terrorism, viruses, is that they are using the knowledge that there's a possibility for manifesting a negative timeline if people are living in fear. So the game is up for them, game over, and it's just a matter of time before this all ends. So it's quite a sweet and short message from the Pleiadians this time. So this channel message is from the 15th of November, 2021. And they said, You will be never so close to your breakthrough as you are being right now. In these days of hesitation, you are finding the most occurrent resolution to your problems. And what you need to realize is that there is always a choice in every scenario and you are the captains that are dictating the speed of your ships. Your ships are arriving to the destination of yourselves and there is the peace in which you are finding the resolution to the societal problems too. We are presenting you the choice of seeing the divine guidance that comes from within and you are liberating yourselves from the chains of confusion when you are solely focusing on this guidance. When you are solely focusing on the incredible maneuvers of your souls that is leading you forward in the game that is going in your favor right now, meaning that the souls that are participating will receive sufficient and loud enough guidance to follow through their hearts. Such great awakening is around the corner for humanity, and such incredible transformation will be taking place as a result of that. What you have to see is the participation in this as a result of the divine plan that is activating the dormant potentials of the souls that have come to earth in the past 20-30 years to realize themselves through this process. 
see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is right now difficult for all of you to see. We are creating this experience together with you, human beings, and the participation of many cosmic beings will be more and more apparent. Create the timeline of your choice without fear, because there is no wrong timeline that you can choose at this point. You are at the verge of the spiritual association of your missions, and we are here to help you to align that with the present trajectory. Follow through your intuition when you are being told to move to a certain direction. This is important for all of you to understand and recognize the signs when they are being presented. The soul is sending signals through the conduit of the mind and through intuition. Please do not add anything to that information and do not intellectualize what is being presented because the soul knows its way and it will be apparent for you when you let go of controlling the meaning of what is being presented. Ask for help when your minds are worrying about the unfolding of the events. Ask for reassurance that you are where you are supposed to be and the integration will happen as you will be assisted. We are the Pleiadian Council and we are here to guide you through the process of your ascension. Peace with you all, lovely creatures of Source Energy. That was uh, today's... I mean, the guidance that I received from them two days ago. And you know what's funny is that the information and the research that I've done about this Bill Wood and what he has experienced was just a confirmation of this message that I received because I was watching that interview yesterday of Bill and I received this message from the Pleiadians the night before. And he was also talking about those people that were, for example, born in 1991. And uh, by the time they are 30 years old, they will activate a lot of their potential, a lot of their psychic abilities. And this is exactly what the Pleiadians are saying as well, that people that were born and came to Earth 20, 30 years ago, they will realize themselves through this process. And these souls will be activating their dormant potentials at this time. And that is part of the divine plan. So people in their 20s, 30s in particular will be activating those dormant abilities. And what the Pleiadians are saying also is very similar to what Bill was saying, that see the light at the end of the tunnel. We have to see the light at the end of the tunnel because... We can create a timeline of our choice without fear because there's no wrong timeline that we can choose at this point. And when I was watching that interview, I was thinking about what I received one night before from the Pleiadians. They were saying the exact same thing, that there's no negative timeline that can be manifested. And the only way for this ascension to go wrong is if the player that knows that is winning is making a mistake. But the probability of making a mistake at this point is impossible. And uh, they were also saying that um, it's important for us not to intellectualize any information that is coming through the conduit of the mind, through intuition at this time, and not to add anything to that information. Because that information and that intuition is a response to our inquiry when we are asking for help. So it's important to know, and they always say that, that help is available we have to ask when our minds are worrying about the unfolding of the event. We have to ask for reassurance because we have a lot of assistance. And um, when we reach out, then the assistance will be available all the time. And this year was all about learning the lesson, about listening to our intuition, about integration, about integrating the negative, the positive, healing, ancestral trauma, generational trauma. And I believe that by the time we come out of 2021, we will have a clearer and a better overview about our mission and why we are here. And it's not rainbows and unicorn, especially what is happening this month, because we have a lot of dark energy and it's, it's manifesting and the dark forces are really trying negative forces. Let's call them negatives. The negative polarity is really trying their best to manipulate this whole process and they are not giving up. They will push further until the pressure is so built up and uh, until people will be so, so fed up that something will break. Even the most negative manifestations will bring positive results. 
And uh, yes, aggression might kick in as I received that message in uh, my card reading in my previous video, but it will happen with a great purpose. Let's pull a few cards now about the rest of this year and the energies of the year before we enter in 2021. Of course, I'm going to do other videos as well in regards to the energies, but we have a few days left of November. We have this powerful lunar eclipse and then we have December. I want to see how things are unfolding before we enter in 2021. So I will do a mini reading about this now. Where are we at right now? We have two of wands. This is a new deck. We have Eight of Wands, both reversed, Six of Pentacles, upright, the High Priestess, Ten of Wands, reversed, and we have at the bottom of the deck, the Nine of Swords. So right off the bat, I can tell you that there is a lot of energy of depression and loss because the Nine of Swords indicates depression, anxiety, nightmare. So there is this energy of being defeated. And I could feel that these days, as I said, like I felt that feeling of grief. And that is the energy of this whole reading. And that is the energy that is present in the world. And I got the death card as well. So this is what the collective is feeling like. They are feeling defeated. They are feeling anxious and depressed and uh, the sense of grief about many people maybe passing away out of fear maybe not even out of the threat that is in the world right now we all know what i'm talking about but it's happening out of the fear that people are experiencing right now this fear about losing one's health and sense of safety that is being shattered at this time sense of safety that is being endangered at this time and then we have a lot of fire energy because we have the ten of wands the eight of wands and the two of wands all reversed so this two of wands is talking about delays and maybe things not going in the planned way so not everything is going our way and the way we imagined it there's a shift there's a shift in the narrative right now that is causing these delays and uh, there is you know, the Eight of Wands is also talking about delays because the Eight of Wands is a card that is um, always indicating like fast movement. But because it's reversed, things are not going as fast as we imagine them to go. There is some frustration that is being present, maybe some travel problems as well. And, you know, plans falling apart because of certain restrictions that there's a new threat again now, terrorism, refugees from the Middle East, whatever, and who knows whatever they will come up with. So there is uh, a delay in, in the plans, but because we have the Ten of Wands, that is a great card because <laughs> this card keeps coming up in readings lately and always came out like um, upright. But in this reading is reversed. That means that people will finally say no. And it's the card of freedom and liberation. So people will get back into their powers and they will realize that they don't need to carry those wands with them any longer. Things can change and it's up to them. And even though there is a frustration and delays in plans, that will set the stage for this liberation, for this saying no. And then we have also the Six of Pentacles and we have the High Priestess in Upright. The High Priestess is intuitive is that intuitive guidance and power that we have within us that humanity is capable of and realizing that power within, realizing those dormant abilities that have been there but haven't been explored. So it's time to explore those abilities. It is also the card of secret and mysteries. So before we enter in 2021, there's a lot of truth that is coming up, a lot of uh, secrets that have been, you know, done behind closed doors. They will be no longer secrets. There's a lot of truth coming up. And then we have the Six of Pentacles, which is collaboration with each other, is exchanging things, is giving and receiving and giving and receiving in a harmonious way. So there will be two challenging months left because we have the nine of swords which is the overall energy of these two months but that will set the stage for us finally uniting our powers and collaborating with each other 
And that collaboration and that unity can get us further, can cause a revolution and evolution in consciousness. We have to unite. And I think we are understanding now that the only way forward is to unite with each other. And we have all the tools and all the help. We have this high priestess energy. So I do think that the overall outlook of these last two months of the year is, yes, there will be challenges. Yes, there will be the sense of loss and grief, but that will set the stage for very, very positive and very promising things to come forward. I want to pull some cards from this Oracle deck and let's see why there are delays. What is that delay and energy of delay about? Goblins. I will check what the guidebook is saying in a second. Let's see another card, please. Why there are these delays? So I got the bone collector. Number one. Goblins and the bone collector. Let's check what the guidebook is saying about the goblins. Fear is an illusion. Choose love today. Forgive yourself and others. Goblins are born when you are wounded and something essential is lost in that experience. From that point on, as you forget your wholeness, they remain with you in the shadows. There, they remind you of what brought them into being by mimicking your own voice, tricking you into believing that you are unworthy, victimized or unlovable. If goblins pay you a visit, know that they represent the shadow of your own self or someone else's and that they are leading you into a potentially reactive situation it's an opportunity of growth however it's a signal as well that you must love yourself so there are delays we cannot move forward because there's this shadow work these goblins that we still need to deal with before we can move forward so that is the delay about and then number one the bone collector you are whole and have everything you need within when the bone collector appears, she is asking you to look closely at your circumstances to see if you are fully present or reacting out of past conditioning and unconscious expectations. Whenever we are wounded, especially when we are young, it's as if something essential is stolen from us. You may feel unworthy or without courage. You may see yourself as flawed, unlovable or expect to be criticized. So it's the same as the other card, as the goblins. We have to love ourselves and to see our own potential. And until we don't deal with that, we cannot move forward. So there is this shadow work and this healing that needs to be done. But as soon as it's done, then we can move forward. So before we enter in 2022, which will have different energies, we still need to face our shadows. We need to face those goblins and we need to deal with them. So these two last months of the year are all about that. That is why we are feeling so hopeless, so lost, so defeated, depressed, anxious. It's because the goblins are showing up so we can finally deal with them. And actually, if you're looking at this card, she's surrounded by bones. She's the bone collector. She's putting the pieces together. She's integrating those pieces that have been shattered, those parts of ourselves that have been split. We had to split our consciousness in different parts in order to cope with certain things as children. So our consciousness has been split, has been fractured, but at this time we can finally put the pieces back together, integrate all those pieces and all those aspects of ourselves back into a whole that have been lost and have been fractured when we were children and the healing is happening this pain is all about that it's all about the healing so this is what i'm seeing guys thank you so much for watching i hope this guidance has resonated with you if it did then you can feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet i would like to say a huge thank you to those that are sharing my messages on other social media platforms or blogs and if i don't say personally a thank you in my comments it means that probably your comment has been removed by youtube i don't know why they are doing that so thank you for being here take care of yourselves and i cannot wait to see you in my next video kisses to you all